cooking the beat. I've got Mr. Herb Jefferson with us today, so thank you for coming along today, Herb. So with Herb, he's going to cook something for us. So what are you cooking today, Herb? Today, Brendan, we're having seafood chowder. That's beautiful, mate. I can't wait to have that. It's mid-afternoon here, so you all know we're quite hungry, so we're looking forward to that. Um, so there'll be a few tunes, a bit of food, and a bit of bit of a chat with Herb. So Herb, and a bit of beer. And a bit of beer. Yeah, it's, it's a warm day today here in Perth, so we'll go to well. All right, Herb, I'll leave you to it, and we'll just chat as we go. Okay. I'll have to remember how to start this. Ready? You got it? You got it the first time, dude. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. Beautiful. Fabulous. Mark Ferretta, you're away, mate. <sighs> so first of all, we got some butter. Awesome. It's about 30 grams. I might have put a little bit extra, because why have 30 when you can have 40? Well, that's it. More than yes. that. That's cool. All right. So can you put that over there for me, please. Herb. So in terms of your food, Herb, what, who influenced you when you're cooking? Um, probably my mother. Yep. Because, like, that's who influences everybody. In yeah. First, yeah. So she you used know? to cook nice meals. Anything sort of favourites that she used to do that you used to really enjoy? Yeah, I really used to like the spaghetti bolognese she made. That's and right. I still kind of make it pretty much the same way. That's cool. But I got really devastated. I left home when I was about 16. Okay. And I went home for my birthday and she's going to cook spaghetti bolognese and she changed the recipe and it had like banana and apple in it. And it <laughs> So I couldn't eat it. Oh, I know. Yeah, I was devastated. Oh. All right, so in here I have one sweet potato, one leek, finely sliced, a couple of potatoes, and four rashes of bacon. A leek? Well, there might actually be five for the same reason there's more butter. Oh, so chuck all that in. So lots of meat, so that's pretty healthy. Cheers, buddy. So now we're just going to stir this around and let it sort of reduce a bit, like so the leek goes nice and translucent. So I've been learning all the words off the cooking shows on TV. You've been paying attention. I have. Oh, and I also put chilli in there. Nice. So a bit of bite. Yeah, a bit of bite. So oh, if I make it at home and my kids are there, I don't cook so much. Yeah, yeah. But for, for you mad dogs, I put a bit. <laughs> Wait the crew up and we have a clean later. Yep, That's great. Yep. No, I like a bit of, bit of, bit of spice. A bit of spice on your life, bro. So, yeah, well, talk, let's talk about your music, so with the Polite Society, because that's a great release. Yeah. Um, and that's out on Bandcamp at the moment, which is fabulous. Sure is. I enjoy that. But, yeah, just talk about where you're at with Polite Society and, and where you're adding. Well, as you know, we had a, it's been a pretty fucked up couple of years. Yep. Our bass player Pete passed away, and then we're all sort of at a loose end with what to do. And we got back together, we got a new bass player, we got Good. Janine in, she's playing bass with us now. And then we started rehearsing, got the band back together, and we had two rehearsals and our drummer, Tony Poehler, on April Fool's Day, had a heart attack at home and passed away. Oh. So that sort of put another little halt on things, yeah. as you can imagine. Yep. But we all sort of had a talk and no one could come up with a good reason not to keep going. That's great. Because Tony had wanted to keep going. And so that's why he's there. Respect to them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On, yeah. So we've got recordings we did. Uh, we put out a DP, but we have other stuff on recorded as well. Brilliant. So we're going to be um, mixing all that up and putting it out and calling it, I don't know, like do something like the Polite Society Greatest Hits Volume 1. Yeah, and just put it out with Pete and Tony on it. As a, as a, yeah. And then move forward with the new people in the band. That's you know? fabulous, so, mate. I can't wait yeah. to hear it, because I love that DP. I didn't listen to it for a while. And I put it on yesterday, and I just loved it. I thought, like, I can't wait to hear those tunes. And, well, well, thanks, bro. And looking forward to hearing it in live today, too. That would be really good. So, I was well, really impressed. It's different when it's just me, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. But you still got the feel of that song. Yeah. Which is great. So, still just giving this a few more minutes. The leak's nearly there. Getting there. We're getting there, getting there. So I'll open this. This is the blue brand of chicken stock. <laughs> it's available at most shops. That's it. RSPCA approved. Fabulous. Which is good. So we're going to use that in a little bit. So I'll get, you know, I'll shoot. Where is that? Look here. It's in. Three pointer. Uh, three three pointer. pointer. All right. Now, I've got a quarter of a cup of flour. I'm going to chuck that in. 
and we're going to make it roo, like roo of home and away. <laughs> or roo. So not you run over. Not murders in the room or. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. So we'll stir this around. Oh, the room is like a paste, isn't it? You put flour in it and it like thickens it all up, bro. Oh, oh. oh. get back in there. Get back. <laughs> Five second rule. Vegetables trying to escape. What? Can't be having that. So do you need much cooking at home there for your, your family? Yeah, I kind of used to do more before I discovered Uber Eats. Yeah, that's... And uh, a lot of time I'll have be ready to cook a meal and then I'll... Because I work sort of late and I'll come home and it'll be 7 o'clock and I'll be like, Uber Eats! Yeah, but, um, it's yeah. small convenient. But uh, yeah, I... I should cook more. I used to cook heaps because, you know, for a while I was a single parent when my oldest daughter was a baby, so I yeah. used to like cook all meals and ahead and all that yeah. sort of thing. No, it's good. I look, I enjoy them. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons we sort of started this show. Just sort of, I think that our, our aim was to, to get musos, and get good musos out there. Into yeah. the world. That's sort of one of our big aims. We thought, well, let's do some cooking, you know? Sure. Come in, come in and cook your favourite meal. Now, Four cups is equal to one litre. Herb's helpful tip for the day. Good stuff. So this is one litre of chicken stock, blue label, as I said, RSPCA approved. And we'll gradually add it. Yep. And then I'll give it a stir, because there's flour on the bottom that needs to come off. While I just spray everything everywhere. Yeah, so you get a the of that, that's good. So, stock. Uh, talking about your family, Poppy Spare, you, you're now a grandparent? I am. That's, a, that's wonderful. And I love seeing kids and that sort of stuff on Facebook. So, what will you teach Poppy as a granddad? What would be the thing that you'd love to do for her and teach her? Well, the thing I've got into lately is teaching music. Because I've been teaching music. I teach piano at um, the guitar shop GT in Malaga. Beautiful. And online. If you want keyboard lessons, I can do it. Good stuff. So I'd like to teach her music. I tried to teach my daughter's music and it just didn't work. Yeah. Like, they ended up in tears and you can't I wasn't make, the guy. You can't make it, can you? They've got to want to do it anyway yeah. with the music. Yeah, it's, 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 you've got to have that that motivation, that desire to be a musician. Yeah. And, and it's all right. I'm shooting. I'm shooting. <laughs> right, that's all the man. Three bob and another one. Another one. <laughs> One thing I did forget, Brendan, if you would be so kind. Yes, mate. I need two cups of water. Yep, I can do There's that. There's a cup measure behind you right there. Oh, beautiful. There we go. Got a bit of water out. I'm on the lad. A bit of salt. A pinch of salt. Yeah, I've been watching the shows. So I don't know how you do it. Yeah. All right, I'm going to need One. two cups. We'll stir that around. And there's still sort of... You can feel this sort of flour still on the bottom, so just make sure you get it all off when there's liquid in the pot. So we stir that around, bring it to the boil, and then we let it go for 20 minutes. So something else I've been talking about here, the COVID, how did that affect your band and your music? Um, well, it affected everyone differently, I think, like, this. At the time of COVID, our bass player was sick, so we weren't really playing anywhere. Yeah. So that wasn't an issue. And, but with the teaching music, it sort of cut that back a bit because, yeah. you know, like people weren't going Yeah, there's out. no people contact. Yeah. Um, but I also did like some online gigs. Right. So one for County yeah. Bankstown Council. Yes. Um, yes. Where I just basically set up a camera in my lounge room with my disco light going in the background yeah. and played a set for... Yeah. 40 minutes, I think. That was the thing I loved about it, how it went online, because I remember I was in hospital when COVID was on, yeah. and I had this, I was going through a bit of a bad time, and I had a lot of pain that day. I remember Clayton Bolger, Clayton, if you're out there, and he was doing a live gig, and it just made my day. Yeah. I just had a bad day, it was COVID, and I'd been in hospital, and, and the musicians just kept doing it. Yeah. You know, the entertaining, keeping the spirit yeah. going, which I thought was really magic. You know, yeah. like, morale is down. Let's, let's make people happy. I, think yeah. that's, I don't know, is that your motivation with your music? To make people happy? Or what, what, what makes you Yes and no. Like, yeah. 
the reason I play music isn't because I wake up every day and go, I want to play music. Yeah. You know, I play music because I can't not play music. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. every day, at least once a day, I either sit down at a piano or pick up a guitar or, you know, I'm doing something, yeah. you know, with music. So it's like I've known painters and they say the same thing. It's like they don't paint because they want to, they paint because they can't not. Yeah. Yes. You know? Yeah, it's, it's your living. Whereas with, with it's me, not even that. It's like it's more than just a like it's, it's hardly a living. Yeah, you know, it's just yeah. like so ingrained into you. Yeah, you know, because I've been playing music since I was like three or four years old. Wow, you know what I mean? What, so, what instrument did you learn first? I learned piano. I yeah. made the mistake of saying to my stepfather because he had a piano. I want to play that. Yeah. So then he took it upon himself to make sure I played, learned to play it, which, you know, when you're like four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten, yeah. you don't really want to do two hours practice a day. No. You know? But you're um, going to do kids' things or... Yeah. Because so, you're from New South Wales, so did yeah. you, do you play rugby league and that sort of stuff? Yeah. I was never allowed to play, like, outside school, though. Yeah, okay. Because... I'm not taking it to the hospital if you get hurt. Yeah, yeah, you know? gotcha, yeah. Gotcha. It was whatever. It's a bit more of a contact sport. Yeah, but you know, it was cool. And yeah, so I played piano basically till I left home. And we had this big old piano, and I couldn't carry it. Yep. You know, I left home. I took a few bags, and that was me. I was out. Yep. Um, so I bought a guitar. Yeah. And then a, a book showing me where the chords were, and I already knew how to read music and everything. So I just had to sort of. Translate yeah. this to this, yep. and just learn. So I remember the first few weeks was me just not even playing anything, just really practicing moving my hands yep. to where the chords were. Did it take you long to learn bar chords? Because I found that a bit hard. That took me a while to get. Uh, no, because I understood the concept of bar chords. Yeah, okay. You know, but it just took practice. Like yeah. it takes anyone practice to do it. Yeah, I think that's the key too. All right, so now I think we let this simmer away simmer? for 20 minutes. Maybe we should have a beer and come back. Yep, let's sounds, do a fade out. Sounds, Ready? sounds like a great, great ah. idea. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. <laughs> I love it. Here. So what are we up to, Eddie, anyway? All right, so our little concoction here has been bubbling away, simmering as we like to call it, simmering. for 20 minutes. So now we're going to add Two cobs of corn that were expertly decobbed <laughs> by Brendan. Here. I told you I was, I was in the kitchen here, mate. This yeah. Is the show works. I'll get in the help. So the corn goes in, right? Yeah. I won't throw that one. Thank you, mate. And you can put whatever seafood you want. We couldn't decide what to get, so we got marinara mix. So there's salmon, fish, mussels, uh, calamari, and prawns in here. Yeah. So we're going to put that in. Look at the mussels. They look beautiful. They do, don't they? They're funny looking. <laughs> oh, so we'll give that a stir. And then last of all, we put in some blue brand cream. The blue brand? Yeah, it's one with the red lid, red and blue. <laughs> so the Melbourne supporters there, they'd be loving that. Yeah, it's, it's called Grand cream. Final Cream. <laughs> oh, we don't want to go there, do we? No. no. Actually, that's a question I'm going to ask you. Who do you follow the, the footy over here? Do you follow the footy or not? I do. And I support the mighty Fremantle Dockers. Yay, hooray. Yes. Well, that's, that's good. When I first moved over here, I met some Eagles players. Yep. And I was from New South Wales, and so I made out like I didn't know who they were, but I knew full well who they were. <laughs> and they were just dickheads. <laughs> and so I just there and then went, I'm going for Frio. Good you guys go. suck. <laughs> so I've been going for Frio ever since then. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to add some cream. Um, it's all about how much you want. I'm going to add like probably half of this at least. So here we go. I'm going to add the whole thing. Lovely. Oh yeah, it's all in there. Take it proper way. There you Look go. Thank you. Give that a stir. Now it's all gone very creamy and thick because of the roux before. So now we'll just let that cook for 10 minutes or so until the seafood is done. Yep. And then it's feeding time. Yeah. Do you want to talk more about your teaching? Yeah. Do you want to... Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm teaching piano and yep. keyboard at the guitar shop GT in Malaga. Yeah. Um, I reckon it's one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. You know, yeah. like, especially because I've got students from like late 70s 
So you're like five years old. Yeah, lovely. You know, so like one, one of my students, she got diagnosed with dementia and decided she wanted to take up piano. Wow. Just to keep her brain active. Yeah. So yeah. it's really rewarding working with people like that. Yeah. Well, they practice what? when they remember to anyway. <laughs> and and with little kids, like when yeah. the spark goes on and the kid sort of goes, oh, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what you've been talking about. The joy of music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. So, you know, I'm... Big on teaching them to read, on, you know, part, big part of it's, you know, you know, you've got to learn how to read music. Yeah. Or, you know, it's like, if you, if you can't read a book, you can't write down your story. And yeah. music's the same thing, so you need to be able to write it down. And so someone else can read your story. Yeah, so yeah it's the same thing. But it's one of the most rewarding things I've done. Oh, that's great. Right. That's great. Like, I'm a trainer. I, I enjoy watching people learn, so yeah. it's, it's a really, really good thing. Did you want to talk about your acting or...? That. <laughs> <laughs> my foray into acting yeah yeah well probably about I don't know it's a few years ago now um, I had a friend and he used to drive actors and stuff around when they came to Perth yep so they were filming a movie in Perth called A Few Less Men which is a sequel to A Few Best Men yep um, it had Chris Marshall in it and Kevin Bishop and Xavier Samuel yep and they were looking for something to do in Perth where they wouldn't get people hassling them out. Yeah, yeah. And it just so happened to be my birthday party that night. Oh. So at about 11 o'clock, this stretch Bentley thing rocks up and these dudes get out with a bottle of Moe and a case of Stella because my friend had clued them up what to bring. Yeah. And they came in and they stayed till like nearly dawn. We um, showed right. them a good time. Yeah, there were cool. bands playing there. Oh, and right. They ended up playing. And a bit of local entertainment. Yeah. I yeah. thought, thought this was great. First fab, fab yeah. Fab, fab, so fab. they had such a good time. Yep. I got, got a phone call a couple of days later. They want you to be in the movie. Oh, cool. So I rocked awesome. up to the movie set or the where it was set up. And there's all these other actors there, like. I call it a cameo, right? So <laughs> yeah. I did a cameo. But all these other extras were there. And they're all talking about what acting they've done. And they're so like, how did you get here? And I said, oh, they came to a party and we got smashed. <laughs> and they're all just like, yeah, whatever. So then they come back, the actors come back from shooting in the morning for lunch. And they're all like, oh, how you going? <laughs> come and eat with us. And yeah. all these people are just like, yeah, fucking, fucking, fucking. <laughs> So yeah, it's the way to get into acting is just get actors really smart. <laughs> have, show them a good time. Yeah, yeah. that's fabulous. Well, it's good you, you had that interaction with them anyway. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's something you'll remember forever. And the funniest bit was, one of them, Chris Marshall's in that series on ABC where he's like a detective in the Caribbean. Yep. Yeah, I've seen that. Guy. Yes, yeah. I have seen and that. And my mate Mitch, that's his favourite show, and he stood next to that dude talking to him for two hours and did not realise who it was. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Was you just treating him like another person? Didn't yeah. You? yeah. And that's Talking cool. about Derby County and stuff. Oh, great. That's cool. But if, you know, if Derby County existed in WA, they'd be Derby County. But yeah. So that's okay. Oh, story. yes. We don't, we don't say Derby in WA. Derby. No, it's Derby. It's Derby. That's it. Yeah. What language should we speak? English. Right. Derby County. English. Something well, like. oh, yeah. Can we speak English? Maybe it's a local thing. We'll put it there as a local thing. It's an accent. Actually, the last thing, another thing we're going to talk about, probably the last thing, the beautiful losers. So, what's your involvement? I've heard of them. Yeah, so what's your involvement with that and a bit of a background of the band? And um, oh, well, um, beautiful losers were around before me. Greg Deer. Yep. Meet people in Perth that Greg Deer. Yeah, I used to see them as a teenager in, yeah, in the, the Holy Rollers. Rollers. Yeah. So, they went on and sort of started playing the beautiful losers. And then they broke up and he's had kids and yeah. this, that and the other, had his professional career. And then probably, oh, it's a long time ago now, probably seven, eight years ago, he hit me up to see if I'd play keyboards yeah. with him. So if he wanted to get a band back together. Yeah. So I said, yeah, right. as you do, you know, yeah, right. And so far we've done four albums mm. and... And that's all on Bandcamp, so I've yeah, 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 yeah. it and they're great. And we did a Fringe Festival show Ooh, lovely. where we did uh, music for Emily Dickinson. So we had this Nicky Jones reading Emily Dickinson poetry while we sort of did a soundscape behind wow. it. That was pretty cool, so I got to play the Ellington and play the, the Steinway. Ellington's beautiful, yeah. what a beautiful club, it's a jazz club. But yeah. I'll tell you a little secret. Steinway's got a broken key on it that's stuck together with tape. <laughs> 
I was like, what the hell? I never thought that would be yeah. a bit of, bit of improvisation. That was good. So then we did like an album of that. So that's one of the albums. And we released one earlier this year, I'd like to think. But we haven't been able to play because Greg had to have shoulder surgery. Yeah, I heard you. And he's himself. only just getting back to be able to yeah, start playing guitar. Yeah, to play guitar. Yeah. But I, well, I did something with him earlier, like a few weeks ago. We did the um, David McCoom movie. Yes, I yeah. saw that. Yeah, from we the did Triffids. the, yeah. yeah, from the Triffids. We did, we did um, like a set of Triffid songs with Marty Casey. Yeah. Um, beforehand. And Sean Hoffman. Oh, I wish I'd been home for that. That's yeah. been about five years. That was pretty good. We did two yeah. nights at, at, at Luna at Leaderville. Oh, lovely. So yeah, it's that was good. good. Well, it's, it seems like you're getting out there playing again, which is good. Yeah, yeah, I get around, you know, slowly, slowly, mate. That's it. That's it. I'm looking forward to that for Polite Society release. That's going to be fantastic. Yeah, well, we're looking at being back, sort of playing in December. Cool. Touch wood. Touch wood. Yeah. The, yeah. Like I don't drop dead tomorrow or something. Yeah. But um, it's like we're becoming spinal tap or something like that. <laughs> so we want to try and avoid that reputation. <laughs> but um, yeah, touch wood, it'll all be good. Yeah, cool. So this is just about ready, I reckon, Brendan. Cool. So fabulous. It's only yeah, you don't want to cook it too long because you don't want the seafood to overcook. And the corn doesn't take any time at all. And so I reckon. We should serve this up and have a feed. I can't wait. I mean, we're all hungry. And my glasses are going foggy. Probably good let's time. serve it up. Yeah, let's serve it up. Sounds great. Right. <laughs> and with that, we're back. Isn't this magical? It's magic, just magic like, television. It's like time warping. <laughs> just to jump to the left. That's it. Cool. Anyway, so we're all good to serve up now. Beautiful. So, Brendan. Yes, mate. Would you like to taste? I'd love a taste. I'd love a taste. All right, let me get the bowl. There you go, my friend. That is fabulous. Seafood oh, chowder for you. All right, it's time for a taste test. After you. That's delicious, herb. Thank you, mate. Beautiful. No worries, brother. Yep. All right, that's a wind up. I want to thank the crew and I want to thank everyone for viewing today. So get onto our YouTube page and our Facebook page. So like and subscribe so you can watch. Um, Further episodes, and thank you so much, Chef, for coming down today. No worries, bro. Loved it. And thank God for the food. It was beautiful. You're welcome. So, do you want to take us out with a kazoo challenge? What is this kazoo challenge you speak of? You, you've got to, if you can play it, it's, let's see if you can do it. <laughs>
Beautiful.